Uh, first of all, just excited about uh, this time of year. Excited for these players. Uh, um, excited for our community. Uh, I know uh, Starkville and, and our great universities. Excited to be able to host the first two rounds again. This is our third year in a row. Um, so proud that we've sold out our arena for two straight nights, <coughs> and uh, these kids deserve it. Uh, I think they're going to see some great basketball this weekend between four really good teams. And uh, we're just honored to, uh, to be a part of the group. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a uh, tremendous challenge in front of us. Um, congratulations to the other three schools, Nichols, Oklahoma State, and Syracuse, their coaches and their players um, for getting here. And uh, we're going to have to play a conference champion uh, tomorrow night. Um, Nichols is coached. Uh, uh, Coach Plasance, whose uh, daughter played at LSU, I'm very familiar with the family. I've known Coach a while, long time. Watching their team play in the conference tournament championship, going through a number one and a number two seed um, to get to the to where they are today. Uh, they're playing well, and uh, got. I mean, when anytime you have a player that's averaging a double double, um, you've got you a heck of a player. They've got four players in double figures. Um, and uh, again, are very well coached, play extremely hard. Uh, they don't get rattled. They've been down in all three games in the conference tournament and came back uh, to win. Uh, they're on a really good streak right now. They've won 11 out of 12, I believe, seven in a row. So we're, uh, we're expecting a heck of a, a challenge tomorrow night. And uh, we're excited to get back to playing. Obviously, we're, we're coming off of stubbing our toe a little bit. Been 13. It will have been 13 days since we played, and that's really concerning. I can tell you. Um, while we took some time at the beginning of this two-week break, uh, we've got a lot of rust. And uh, as I told them this morning in film, we got one day to knock the rust off. Um, but it's just a really long time between playing. Um, we've had some good practices. Yesterday's practice was a little bit better than typical for us. And, um, but it's just been a long layoff, and uh, it's concerning, to be honest with you. Okay. At that time, we'll open it up to questions for the student-athletes. We'll start here in the front. Uh, Victoria, uh, you know, we're at the stage now where every game could be your last uh, and be the end of your state career at Mississippi State. Can you kind of reflect on all those four years, starting when you got here as a freshman, and maybe how you've evolved, your game evolved, what you've been asked to do evolve? Just talk about the four years. Um, I started freshman year, I was just out there playing, you know, but I didn't care as in the world, I'm not worried about what I'm doing, so I was just taking all the, like, most of the shots and, um, just throwing stuff up most of the time, but I feel like over, overall, like, since that, since my freshman year, my game has grown defensively and offensively, um, I'm taking better shots and, um, doing better things without the ball, so I feel like the overall experience for me in state has been great. Come over here on the right side. Tara, you know, when you get deep into the NCAA tournament, a lot of times you play a lot of teams that have really good post players. And I know last year that was the way. Do you watch other elite post players in the country? Do you compare yourself to them? Or do you do you know anything about them? Like, what, what's it like when you go up against, you know, an Asia Wilson or something like that? Like, what's that like kind of deep in the tournament? I mean, in the tournament, you know, you have great players. I mean, we watch film on whoever we're playing next. But I don't compare myself to anybody because I'm not like anybody else. So, yeah. Go to the back, back right corner. All right. Morgan, uh, you guys, Coach Shepard talked about you had that little bit of a layoff now and you rested up and now you're ready to make another run. But what's what's the mindset now getting ready for the NCAA tournament for this team? Uh, just one game. Don't take anything for granted. Don't take anyone lightly. You know, you got to go out there and play hard. Give it your all. You don't want to. I thought the court and regret something that you didn't do, so we're just going to give it all every game. Go in the middle. Good afternoon. Uh, Adam Inacchino from a commercial dispatch in Columbus. Uh, ladies, uh, for all three, the uh, coach said about the rust. Uh, do you sense it being similar or different from last season with a similar time frame between the end of the SEC tournament and the first NCAA tournament game? Start on the end with Tierra. 
Okay. Um, I mean, like you said, we know we had a couple days off. I mean, weeks off. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You said it right. Days. <laughs> I mean, without games, without games, we haven't played. So you know, it's different. We're not playing games, but I feel like um, this time last year it was getting better. Defensively, this time this year, I feel like we're working on some things to get better. Um, shooting the ball well, um, playing defense harder. You know, he, he's getting the best out, out of us. Working extremely hard on defense, trying to get things right, and just trying to you know, get better every day. Yeah. Not gonna say points, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, just being off what Morgan said, we were a little rusty. I feel like it's getting better, and um, we've been working on offense and defense, and just being precise with everything we do. So I feel like these two weeks have, well, a couple days have helped us a lot. Come over here to the right. Hey Morgan, Coach mentioned the other day that he felt like the difference in this year's team probably is the experience that y'all had and what you gained from last year. How do you feel like that experience helps you coming into this tournament? I think it's helped because um, the final 14 they went through last year, uh, we're still here. Most of us are still here. We have four seniors starting in Tierra. And, you know, they all went to final four with us last year. So it really helps us going into March. Cause, I mean, we know what it is. We know what it takes to get there. So we just got to work hard and, you know, spread through the team. Stay on the right side. Morgan, I know you had that 41-point game against Baylor last year in the tournament. Do you think at, at some point, you know, because Victoria and Tierra obviously do a lot of the scoring, but at some point either you or Blair or Rashunda or somebody is going to have to jump up and have a game like that to kind of get back where you want to be? Um, I feel like any game, anyone can go out there and score. I think it just comes with, you know, what happens. I mean, the Florida game, I don't think anyone's just going to go out there and try. It just happened. I mean, Roe might go out there and have 30. Blair might have 20 next game. I mean, you never know. It's just we're feeling it. I feel like anyone can go off any game. You can't take any of us lightly. Go to the left side. Uh, for, for each of you, can you remember the loudest that you've heard the hum and what it was like? Morgan, you want to start? <laughs> 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 um, probably the South Carolina game from this year. It was pretty loud in there, you know, couldn't really hear Morgan calling the play, so you had to repeat it like six times. So I think that's probably the loudest I've heard it since I've been here. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I would say South Carolina game too, but I would say um I feel like Michigan State game. Ooh. That was really loud in there. Like yeah, that was a good game. I'm gonna have to say Michigan. Michigan State. <laughs> it was pretty loud. What she said was 70. That was a sound like 70, so it was pretty loud in there. As, as, follow, as a follow up to know, or, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to, to hope that you're going to get two more chances to play here with it being sold out. What the coach said that it speaks to what the community has done to follow you guys, but what has that entered into your thinking at all the last couple of days and preparing for what could be two sellouts to end your careers here? Um, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. <laughs> sure. The, the, <laughs> thank you. The, the fact that there's the possibility of having two sellouts here oh. to end your careers here playing uh, in Starkville. Uh, have you guys reflected on that? And, and if so, what, what do you think that that just... Does it bring everything full circle with all the records and accomplishments and how hard you guys have worked to build it? Our reflection is we have one game that we've been guaranteed. I was say and that's our reflection. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did perhaps my question by saying the possibility of two <coughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me that you're pretty. Uh, I'm pretty, not, thank you. Well, yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> but, but you're pretty. Uh, 
pretty even kill during the course of a game. Uh, you don't seem to, your emotions don't seem, don't seem to express your emotions as much as they're there, whether it's a good play or bad play. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about kind of your demeanor on the court? Um, I try not to show frustration because, you know, frustration is kind of a sign of weakness. So I feel like I should just keep a level head and just, if I see my teammates, they level headed, why should I be showing all that, you know, nonsense? But if I make a good player, my teammates make a good player, I'm showing emotion most of the time. So I just feel like it depends on the situation of the game. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay. Thank you, ladies. Right, loaded for dogs. Okay, at this time we'll open it up for questions for coach. Let's start up front. Um, Amber Dodd from Feet.com. So last year, well, not last year, um, we're referring to last year, you said you wanted your players to really take in the moment and really embrace what they're going through. Uh, seeing your players have a good time and really analyzing the game, but also, you know, being giddy and like their sisters, how do you think your players are really taking that advice and applying it throughout the season? Well, they're like this every day. Uh, <laughs> this is my world that I live in, so welcome to it. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss, obviously, my seniors, and uh, they've been really, you know, they've been really special. It, all I do is fuss and complain about how we don't practice hard, and how we don't do this right, and we don't do that right. But what they have done right is 32 out of 33 games when the lights came on, they played pretty well. Um, so, um, it, you know, it's very rewarding as a coach. It's also a lot of fun. I mean. I say it all the time, I, I want to have fun coming to the office. I want to have fun coaching my kids. Um, life's too short. So, you know, this, this group's been special. Um, look, 30 and 0. It took 20 years for it to happen again since 98. It may take 40 for it to happen again. It's probably never going to happen again in my career. Um, so if you're not stopping to smell the roses and enjoy that a little bit, you know, you're, you're missing the missing the boat. So I've I've tried to really enjoy them, especially even the last couple of days. Uh, I could tell myself I've had a little different demeanor going into the the tournament. And we'll stay on the right side in the back. I know obviously you're focused on the upcoming game, but when you saw the bracket and you saw Syracuse and Oklahoma State, and just because of you had played them this year, obviously, do you think? You know, because a lot of times when you get a number one seed, you're like, wow, you're the easy road to the Sweet 16. But obviously, you had some tough games against them. Did you think that got their attention at all? I mean, what did you think when you saw that bracket? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I I, uh, I thought maybe the committee had a little fun with us. <laughs> you know, we we had already played each of those teams. And, uh, again, we're going to have to beat a, a really good, you know, really good team tomorrow night to, to get to one of those two. You know, DePaul and, and Oklahoma had played before. They played today in the first round, and, uh, you know, they had had a knockdown, drag out overtime game. And so sometimes those things just happen. And um, to see those teams pop up, a um, lot of respect. I mean, we, we had two, obviously, the game here with uh, Oklahoma State was a heck of a game. Um, and then when we played Syracuse in, in Vegas, uh, we had spurts where we played well. And we had some spurts where we didn't play well. And so uh, b both teams are unique and uh, are well coached. So if we're fortunate enough to win tomorrow night and we're going to have to play one of those teams, it will not be an easy task. Uh, it will be a very difficult uh, opponent, and it will be somebody that our kids will have to be ready to play for, play against. We'll go to the back right. Coach, you had talked about earlier, uh, talking about having that 13 days off, having that, you know, uh, time layoff, I guess, and you said that the team's not been used to it. But how, how have they handled the being off, and what's their focal point and mindset heading, in, heading into the tournament tomorrow? Well, I, I, I can speak for them. I can tell you the first two days that they had, they, they really handled that well because we didn't do anything. So we, they, uh, <coughs> we had two days off to start. We only shot on Wednesday. Uh, we came back practice Thursday, Friday took Saturday off, then we didn't work out again until Sunday night late. Um, once we got our bracket and found out we weren't, weren't going to play until Saturday, 
um, I slipped in another, not an off day Tuesday, but we just shot, film and shot, and so um, worked a lot of offense. And um, so, um, you know, we've had, you know, a couple of good practices. We've had some not so good, but that's been all year. And so I just think they're ready to play. I know I am. I'm, these two weeks are just awful. I mean, last year it worked to our advantage, but I'm going to say 19 times out of 20, I'm ready to play. Uh, if you've lost, you're ready to get that out of your mind, you know, that taste out of your mouth. If you won, you want to keep playing. So this is something that I bring up every year in our meetings, and I don't get anywhere with it, but it's just hard. It's very, very doing. And then, then this week's spring break. I mean, there's just not, a, you know, it's just a, a really hard time. You try to keep them busy. I hate to, you know, not do anything with them because all they do is lay around and sleep all day. And and so that's why we shot on Tuesday. But, uh, and it's it's really challenging. We'll go here in the front. Coach, you mentioned the four seniors. Uh, obviously, they're, they're each different. Uh, and I think Victoria, in one respect, that you'll probably agree, when she was a freshman, when she came in, she came in with a lot of notoriety. There was a, you know, there was a real spotlight on her. And probably more criticism than you would expect from more first freshman because of the, what she was asked to play. Can you talk about her role when she got here, first couple of years, and how it's evolved since then, and how she's handled the things you've asked her to do? You know, Victoria's only done what we've asked her to do, whether she was a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. Her freshman year, you know, we had a hard time scoring if Victoria didn't score. We just we didn't have a lot of options on the floor. Um, we had some kids that we would develop at a later time, but she was the one that had that <clears throat> scores mentality, if you will. And so, uh, you know, it, that team, uh, again, was a pretty good team, 27-7, went to Duke, got beat in the second round of the NCAA tournament. But... Um, you know, she only did what I asked her to do, which was, you know, she took a lot of shots. But I've seen her, every shot Victoria's ever taken from me, I've seen her make a hundredfold. Some that you think aren't so good, I might not think they're good, but I've seen her make them, you know. So as she's grown and evolved into the player she is today, she is an All-American. Uh, she's an All-American because she plays both ends of the floor, She's a great teammate. She's uh, become a good assist player. She rebounds the basketball, six a game. Um, her shot selection has really become her strength. And um, I think all of that has come to fruition because we've put good players around her, with her. You know, when we recruited her, I told her she wasn't going to have to do it by herself. <coughs> um, we would get good players to go with her, and, um, and that's what we've done. So... I think she would tell you, uh, first and foremost, that the better players we've been able to recruit and put around her, the easier her job has become. Now, do I not still go to her when I need something done? Absolutely. Um, but I also have some others. That if I had to run her as a decoy, they'd be ready to step up and make the shot too. So just think her whole mental uh, approach to the game. She's come to understand the importance that I place on defense. She's no different than any other high school kid. Most high school kids have not been coached on defense. They've not been demanded to play defense. And so that's a whole new experience. Um, I've coached her and Blair as hard as anybody I've ever coached in my career. And they've taken it like a champ. I think that's why they're the players they've become. Uh, because they can take it, they do understand it's not personal, it, and and, uh, and that's hard for kids. Let's face it, it is. Morgan would probably fall in the next as number three uh, as being someone that we've really demanded of. So uh, I'm really proud of Victoria. She's a she's a hoot. She's just fun to be around. I mean, I'm gonna miss that about her. I I told her, you know, Victoria's again. Y'all know this. She's going to go home. If I can't find her in Startville, I know she's in Carthage. I don't have to look anywhere else because she's going to be with mom and dad and grandma. And, uh, you know, when her time comes to play at another level, I don't think Victoria's going across the water. 
that's too far from mom, dad, and grandma. Uh, and I've told her before, I said, you'll end up coaching. Oh, no, I won't coach. I say, you will, and you'll end up coaching me. She goes, well, I might do that if you're writing a check. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, that's Victoria, though. I mean, she's just, uh, she's just really been a, a real pleasure and a joy to coach. We'll go here on the right side. You, you were talking about, you know, you've talked about before that a lot of the really good teams in the country have that elite inside presence. I think you call them like aircraft carriers yep. sometimes and everything like that. What, you know, why is that so important? Why do the good teams seem to have a Tierra McCowan or somebody like a Samuelson or something like that that, that can do that? They're just your, uh, you know, to me, they're your forgiveness players, you know. You take a bad shot or you, you you miss a bunch of shots, they're the ones that are getting the rebounds and the stick backs. That's what was so hard for us in the South Carolina game is that we've started games shooting the ball poorly before. Georgia comes to mind. I, I think we were one for the world to start that game, but Tierra was down there getting all the rebounds and stick backs. I think it was a two-point game at the end of the first quarter, but Tierra almost had a double-double, but she was, getting all, she was cleaning up our mess, that's what I call it. In the South Carolina game, we didn't have that. So we were shooting, missing. We weren't getting the rebound. Well, that affects your psyche completely different than if you're shooting, but we're still scoring. That's what she provides us. She not only cleans up our mess on offense, but she's also the aircraft carrier that protects the rim on defense. She may not block the shot, but she may alter it, or somebody just may look up and go, mm, no, I'm not going in there. And they may turn back around and come back out. So. Just her presence, again, I think everybody in the room saw firsthand the importance of Tierra McCown to our basketball team. And I think that's the difference. Look, last year in the NCAA tournament, what she score, 20 in the fourth quarter against Washington? <coughs> I mean, but she's also that person that was able to go in there and bang with those bigs from Baylor, you know, in that game. Um, she just has a presence about her, and, and um, I think that's really a, a quality you've got to have. Go over to the left. Coach Willow was saying from uh, Nichols, it seemed like they're a team that has a lot of scrappers. I guess that's why they're conference champions. Yep. Is that an accurate assessment of them? What concerns you most about them? Absolutely. I think they're a, a real um, extension of their coach. Um, you know, Coach Plasance is just. She's been, you know, I think she's got her footprint and her handprint all over that team. Uh, again, you've got uh, Barrios, who's a. Uh, Double double, and uh, you've got a three other guard. There, four guard lineup team, much like us. And so, you but you've got that big guard in 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 Barrios that just uh, you know she's hard to deal with. You better find her. She can shoot the three at over forty percent a clip. Uh, you know, forty seven percent from from the floor. Uh, almost ten rebounds a game. I mean, look, I don't care what league you play in, you're getting a double double. You're you're working. You know, and I think that's that's the thing you have to respect about her team. They've been down, uh, they've been down a lot. They don't bother them. They just fight and keep staying in the fight until they find a way. And they made seven threes in the third quarter after being down 13 at half in the conference tournament championship game. Most teams are headed south. They came out in the third quarter. And you can tell watching the film, they just got more confident and more confident and more confident with each shot. And uh, you get in the NCAA tournament now and you get a team going the wrong direction, it's hard to head them off. Um, I, I recall Michigan State here two years ago, they went on a 20 to nothing run against us, you know, in the, <coughs> in the third quarter. After we got up 13, they went on a 20 to nothing run. To, and we were down seven going into the fourth. So. It's really, you know, you got to respect them. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for their program, for, for Coach. Um, I know what those kids uh, can do. I've seen enough film on them. Uh, and so we, you know, we've done nothing but pay attention to them. We'll go to Adam. You've talked about the community. Uh, entering today, to my knowledge, this was the only place in the country that has sold out. Uh, regardless of you, if you want to do one or two games. Um, the fact that it's Starkville, Mississippi, rather than Bridgeport, Stores, South Bend, Knoxville, Columbia, what does that say? 
I think it's the fact that it is Starkville, Mississippi. And, you know, I think it's it's time that uh, I think people recognize um, women's basketball is is important here, and uh, uh, our fans, our, our fan base, our our uh, players deserve all the credit. Um, it's just uh, it's really transformed and, and changed, and uh, you know I think it's great for our game. Um, I'm obviously so proud uh, of what uh, we've been able to do here, but I think again when we started this six years ago, Adam, if we'd have started this and all we did is stood around the two three zone, I don't think we'd have the fan base we have today. You know when we were cutting our teeth and going 13 and 17 that first year. The people that we did have coming to our game, and it wasn't many, and I've said it before, I didn't really want that many until we could change some things, but they came and appreciated how hard those kids played. As we've grown 22 and 14, 27 and 7, 28 and 8, 34 and 5, 32 and 1 now, it's not what we do, but how we do it. It's not how we play, it's, it, it is how we play the game, it's not that we play the game. Look, I don't think people just woke up one morning, I've said this before, and said, hey, you know what, I'm going to be a women's basketball fan at Mississippi State. I don't think that's what happened. I think people fell in love with our kids. I think that's what makes it so special and so unique here. So to rephrase your, 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 your point, I think it is Starkville, Mississippi, and that's why it's so special here. And I just think it's, um, it's what people have really uh, – come to love. It's the end thing to do. It's in, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's game day. Are we going to the game? What time's the game? Yes, we're going to the game. Um, and so it's it's uh, it's really been been a neat deal for all of us. We got time for one more. All right. If there's nothing else, thank you, Coach. All right. Praise the Lord and go, dogs. <laughs>